In this video, we're going to talk about some proper constraining techniques and general guidelines you should try to follow in your designs for Autodesk Inventor. Here with the proper constraint techniques IAM, I'm going to place in another occurrence of the double cube. So I'll simply find it here in the tree and drag and drop it in. I would like to start putting this together. Let's say I do this a little sloppy. I'm going to start my constraint command and basically put this together with this edge to this edge. And then I'm going to apply that and put this edge to this edge. Also apply that, hit cancel. This is now a fully constrained component. Now I did that with only two constraints. Normally I might use three constraints on there and I might do it more effectively because of that. So what's really wrong with applying two constraints like I did there to the edges? Let's think about design changes. Let's say that some grand idea came down from the pipe that we want to put a rounded edge on these blocks. Maybe they're too sharp for kids. So I'm going to activate this component, start my fillet command, and just grab a loop here, put my fillet on, 0.125 inches. I'll go ahead and approve that. Well, great, that's exactly what we wanted. That's what the design change dictated that we need to change in our components to make this more kid friendly. So I'll go ahead and finish my edit. Oh, and what did I get? Proper constraint techniques IAM, errors occurred during update. Let's take a look there. Relationship was placed with respect to geometry that is no longer available. So basically, those two make constraints that I added there are no longer valid because the edges are gone on that component. So those were poor selections. Whenever possible, you should try to use faces and planes instead of edges and points. Now there's times where you can't get around using an edge or a point, but you should generally avoid it. If you can use a work plane, if you can use an origin plane and use that in combination with one of your constant faces, those are better ideas. So let's go ahead and accept this to see what we got. We can see mate two and mate three have these error triangles on them. If I double click on them to modify them, you can see it's bringing up the offset. I don't want that. I actually need to go in there and fix it right click and choose this recover. This tells me the relationship is with undefined geometry. Click next. It says, well, basically the same error message again. If I click next again, it will give me options to either edit it, delete it, suppress it, or isolate and edit. If you got to this design doctor, you're probably wasting your time. I'm gonna go ahead and close this because 90% of the time, you're just gonna right click here and choose edit instead of recover. So here I can see the first selection is now gone and only my second selection remains. So I'm gonna make this a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my selection one and actually have this be a plane instead. So I'll expand my rectangular four hole and here I'll try to find the correct planar reference. Make sure that's selected. And it actually still wants to choose the edge. So you can see it's really just not wanting to work for me. If I clear both selections, I can actually pick them all over again. So here I'll go ahead and do XZ, and I want that to go to selection two on the cube. Let's see if the origin there works out good. And no, it doesn't. You can see the XY plane is on the one side of it. So putting these two origin planes together is not going to work out. So instead, I'll go back up here to my selection one and simply choose that side face to that side face and make sure that's flush. Go ahead and choose OK. And now I still have mate three, which is damaged. I'll go ahead and right click and choose edit. Rechoose my selections to be the top of the block. Again, nice solid face there. And selection two be the bottom of that piece. I'll go ahead and okay that. And now I just need to add one more constraint to lock this in position with that back flush end. So what do we learn from that? Try to avoid edges, try to avoid points, and make better use of your origin planes have a better understanding as you're designing your IPTs for how they will be utilized in an assembly to put your components together. If you don't have this forethought going into your design, or if your design team, if you're working with others, doesn't have a good understanding of this, what will happen is you'll be plagued by those assembly constraint and joint errors nonstop because changes will happen to your components, they'll update an assembly, and things just won't fit together correctly. So make better decisions about how you put things together based on how you actually build your parts.